The top stories at seven. Bullets and bombs as the might of Russia's military is unleashed on Ukraine. Cabinet monitors the conflict for possible impacts on local prices. We get the views of Antigua and Barbuda's top diplomat in Washington to the bloody conflict in Eastern Europe. ECCB data show Antigua and Barbuda has the lowest gasoline prices in the currency union. And the government confirms it will be moving to acquire and renovate Jolly Beach Hotel. It also earmarks funds for severance. Those stories begin right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS. And Tegan's most, most trusted name in news. My name is Garfield Burford. Welcome. And I'm Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday night. The world has been jolted by the full-scale invasion of Ukraine by its neighbor Russia with a dire warning from President Vladimir Putin to countries which may be tempted to intervene on Ukraine's behalf, saying that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead you to such consequences as you have never experienced in your history. That's right. Now, Russia has unleashed the full might of its military muscle on Ukraine, which had been part of the Soviet Union. Ukraine, a country of some 40 million people, is being attacked from three sides, with missiles being fired on cities and military targets. The death toll is already mounting. Already, it is in the 50s. Well, this is yet another incursion in Ukraine by the Russians after the 2014 annexation of Crimea and the subsequent conflict in the Donbass region, which has left some 14,000 people dead. Oil prices have jumped and markets have fallen, meaning there could be ripple effects the world over for supply, prices and inflation. In a short while, we'll be joined by Antigua and probably the top diplomat in Washington, D.C., our ambassador to, and to the United States and the Organization of American States, Sir Ronald Sanders. He'll be telling us more about this conflict and the implications for countries in the global south, including in this region. Meanwhile, the government is paying close attention to the ongoing conflict in Eastern Europe. Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, says war in Europe could trigger inflation, leading to increases in the prices of food and other essential items. He says petrol prices could also increase since Russia is a major European supplier. He says the more conflict spreads, the more risk for regional tourism disruption. The chief of staff is hoping other oil producers will fill the gap if the need arises. Meanwhile, the conflict is already affecting Caribbean students studying in Europe, but Ambassador Hurst says he doesn't know if any locals studying in current danger zones. He says the others have also been making plans to leave. Meanwhile, you know, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has outlined data showing Antigua and Barbuda had the lowest average gasoline prices in the currency union up to last month. Of course, this issue is going to be watched very closely with the conflict in Eastern Europe. The country's price of $12.50 per, uh, $12 per gallon was marginally lower than Dominica's at $12.68, with the highest price being recorded in Anguilla at $17.93, and the second highest being $16.05 in Montserrat. The average across the currency union is $14.51. Meanwhile, the country has the second lowest diesel prices in the currency union at $12.20, with only Dominica's $10.54 being lower. Antigua and Barbuda's prices are lower than the currency union's average of $13.27, with the highest price recorded in St. Kitts and Nevis at $15.46. In relation to the price of a 20-pound cylinder of liquefied petroleum gas or cooking gas, Antigua and Barbuda has the second lowest in the currency union at $32, with St. Kitts at $30, while the, with the, uh, being the lowest. The highest in the ECCU is $43.06 in Montserrat, 
while the currency union's average is $35.87. It's a similar picture in prices for the 100-pound cylinder of cooking gas, with Antigua and Barbuda's average price of $155 being the second lowest behind 140 in St. Kitts and Nevis. The highest prices are $236.20 in Grenada and $232.78 in St. Lucia. The ECCU average is $188. The International Monetary Fund recently told the government here in St. John's to assess the costs and benefits of the current, uh, of the current energy pricing mechanisms given rising international oil prices. The Prime Minister and Finance Minister Honorable Gaston Brown has indicated the government forfeited millions of dollars last year by absorbing some of the increases in oil prices to prevent this being passed on to consumers. In another story, CARICOM has reacted to the latest invasion of Ukraine. The 15-member bloc says it strongly condemns the military attacks and invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. It also calls for the immediate and complete withdrawal of the military presence and cessation of any further actions that may intensify the current perilous situation in that country. The recognition by the Russian Federation of the regions of Donetsk and Luhansk represents a violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. CARICOM also says the, hostil the hostilities against Ukraine go counter to the principles of respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, non-interference in the internal affairs of another sovereign state. It is also calling on all parties involved to urgently embark on intensified diplomatic dialogue to immediately de-escalate hostilities and work towards a sustainable peace. As I said, we'll be getting back to, Amb to Ambassador Sir Ronald Sanders in a short while. He'll be joining us live from Washington, D.C. to talk more about the implications, especially for the prices of commodities and how this could be having a ripple effect around the world. How it is possible that we may all pay a price for what's taking place in Eastern Europe. Well, in other news now, the government has confirmed it has extended an offer of U.S. $47 million to acquire and renovate the Jolly Beach Hotel property in St. Mary. The funds have been earmarked from a U.S. $200 million bond, which was, uh, which was fully subscribed on the international capital markets. The government says it will also be apportioning $20 million U.S. million to repay, quote, secured and priority creditors, including staff severance, end quote. The hotel employed about 450 workers who have been agitating for their severance payments since the cessation of operations there. Now, the update coincides with a tour of the property this week by Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown and Works Minister Honorable Lennox Weston. Prime Minister Brown says the renovation will transform the hotel into a four-star property with over 200 rooms and will provide employment for over 500 individuals. A release from the office of the Prime Minister says this is one of two major capital projects the government will be undertaking with the loan funds. The other is the construction of a hotel at Morris Bay. And the government also says the bond proceeds will allow for greater debt sustainability and to invest in strategic projects that will drive economic growth, create employment and generate increased revenue to finance government operations. Now, you would remember Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown unveiled a $1.64 billion budget for this fiscal year, featuring a significant increase in capital spending to accelerate growth in economic output. The Finance Minister here in St. John's projects growth in real gross domestic product of at least 8% in fiscal year 2022. The International Monetary Fund's forecast is marginally lower at 7%. Well, Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, says planned investments at the Cedar Valley Golf Course will increase job opportunities for locals. The multi-million dollar upgrades are set to begin in a few months. I'll report on this tonight from Jamie Roche. Cabinet says a group of investors has agreed to deposit U.S. $50 million in an escrow account as part of a deal with the government to upgrade the Cedar Valley Golf Course. Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, says many tourists would like to play golf when they visit this country. Uh, we haven't had as many going to the golf course because it is not nearly as, uh, as attractive as it ought to be. And so the idea is to increase the attractiveness of the Cedar Valley Golf Course. Planned upgrades include luxury housing, a hotel and roadways off the course. It, it will increase uh, the number of people going to play golf and therefore increase the number of taxi drivers uh, who uh, are able to shuttle them to and from uh, the, the... He says many locals can also bid for jobs for the upkeep of the golf course and the adjoining residences. 
Ambassador Hurd says the government will contribute land for its part in the deal and work set to begin June will last 24 to 30 months. The government says the project will be valued at more than 180 million U.S. dollars when completed. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Thanks so much, Jamie. Now, a major development for the entertainment sector now as FETs will be making a grand return in Antigua and Barbuda as early as next week. Shana Keisha Francis has the details from this, week, this morning's post-cabinet media briefing. Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's office, Ambassador Lionel Hurst, says the cabinet has officially agreed to the return of FETs in Antigua and Barbuda. Come March the 1st, we'll see uh, an opportunity for the, those who are planning FETs to be able to participate, uh, or rather to have others participate in the merrymaking uh, that comes with a FET. He says Creative Industries Minister Honorable Michael Brown has collaborated with the Ministry of Health, the Royal Police Force, and the Festivals Commission to oversee the limits on FETs based on the venue. There is a working group that is uh, currently designing uh, the maximum for each venue so that um, if the Sir Fifth Richard Stadium that can hold 15,000 people uh, um, were a part of the FET um, venue, uh, we wouldn't allow 15,000, but maybe a smaller number. He says, however, we are still in a pandemic, so certain conditions will apply. Those who are eligible to attend will have to be vaccinated. But we're making an exception. Those who may not uh, otherwise be eligible uh, to participate will have to have um, a rapid uh, antigen test or a PCR test uh, in order for them to enter. Ambassador Hurst says these conditions are in place to keep us safe. The whole idea is to enable large gatherings uh, but with uh, conditionalities and those conditionalities are very much dependent upon keeping us away from the hospital and also uh, keeping us uh, healthy. However, he says the best defense against the virus is to get vaccinated. Shanakisha Francis, ABS News. Now the return of FEDS is welcome news for stakeholders. One promoter is excited for the potential impact on the country's economy. I'm saying we've been waiting for about just about two years now. You know, we've been taking a lot of blows. It's coming back. Even though it's not going to be as big, it's a good feeling, you know. Most of the promoters, most of the persons who do FEDS and promoting it in Antigua, this is their daily bread. FETs and other events provide supplementary income for many involved in the entertainment sector. It really, really affected me a lot because I couldn't do that. So I had to work from a paycheck to a paycheck. I will be getting jobs, take care of my bills, my family. It's good for the economy. It's good for the clothing stores, hairdresser. Even today, I went to a nail tech and she's saying to me, She's getting more clients now. It's also a welcome development for the people who've been deprived of their usual pastimes. Antigua is a party country, right? I'm a party man. And, you know, staying home and not, not getting to move my limbs and move my waist is putting me in problem. So I need some WD-40 to get myself organized for next month because I need to party. The local Calypsonians and soca artists will soon get their chance to have their say on Carnival 2022. We're staying with subjects related to the orange economy. The Creative Industries Ministry has issued an invitation to meet with Calypsonians, their songwriters, music producers and arrangers on Monday the 28th of February at 5 p.m. Meanwhile, soca artists, their songwriters, music producers and arrangers will get their opportunity at 5 on Tuesday, March 1. Meetings will be held at the Multipurpose Cultural and Exhibition Center where the ministry advises factors influencing the future of soca and carnival will be discussed. Now, if you are interested in attending these town hall meetings, please register your intent by calling the number you're seeing on your screen, 462-4707, or send an email to abfestivals at ab.gov.ag. Antigua's Carnival celebration is slated tentatively to take place from July 27 to August 2 this year. I want to follow up on our own reporting. Key discussions are taking place towards the establishment of the Center of Excellence for Oceanography and the Blue Economy at the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus. Members of the International Steering Committee 
of, for the center are now in Antigua and Barbuda where they have been holding crucial discussions with key stakeholders. The group made a presentation to cabinet yesterday and two of the members joined the post-cabinet media briefing this morning. To Great focus is being placed on the blue economy, its untapped wealth and making the most of the island's resources in the ocean and on our seabeds. Dr. Joanne Newman from the Association of Commonwealth Universities says the center at the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus will serve a key purpose in the Eastern Caribbean. We'll have national, regional and international significance and the Association of Commonwealth Universities is really excited and looking forward to playing our role in supporting its establishment. The Association of Commonwealth Universities is a network of over 500 universities across 53 countries in the Commonwealth who have advanced knowledge and expertise in the blue economy. Their role will be to support the center as well as provide partnerships within the universities to help support new research and educational initiatives. For example, in its Mona campus, its St. Augustine campus, its Cave Hill campus, and we convened a round table with the university last April where we mapped out the centers of real strength and areas of real strength and areas where the uh, Antiguan uh, Center of Excellence could focus. Head of the Oceans and Natural Resources at the Commonwealth Secretariat, Dr. Nick Mountford, met with the technical team within the Blue Economy and says he was delighted to see such high-level expertise in this area. He added he has been working with the country for almost a decade, establishing good ocean governance and to enable the country to develop a sustainable blue economy for generations to come. A sustainable blue economy is about looking at all the activities we do in the ocean and seeing how we can do them in a way that brings wealth and prosperity to the nation, but also in a way that um, continues that wealth and prosperity for future generations. Dr. Mountford says the blue economy should never be taken for granted. This is Kimmy Man. Thank you so much, Kim. Now, more on the story we reported last evening. Roaming charges are set to be reduced by up to 70% within CARICOM. A declaration signed in Grenada will result in a reduction of up to, as I said, 70% in intra CARICOM roaming charges. The declaration of St. George's has been signed by, St. Uh, by Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Mitchell, who is lead CARICOM head of government with responsibility for science and technology, as well as senior executives of Digicel Group and Cable and Wireless Communications. The signatories say the arrangement will facilitate the provision of seamless mobile services, including voice, SMS, text, and data, and will further bolster the CARICOM single ICT space and CARICOM single market and economy. Uh, that's a serious mean. Now, CARICOM citizens are expected to begin enjoying the benefits of the reduction of roaming charges as early as the second quarter of this year. CARICOM heads have implemented a governance structure to give effect to the declaration, including Caribbean Telecommunications President and Antigua and Barbuda's Telecommunications Minister, Honorable Melford Nicholas. Minister Nicholas was also present for the signing ceremony in Grenada at the Trade Center Annex in St. George's on Wednesday. In another area of interest, the government says the latest immigration amnesty set to run from March 1 to April 30 this year will be a two-tiered system. If you've lived here for... Uh four years, but not as many as seven years, uh, then uh, we're talking about residency, uh, curing the, 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 the faults so that um, you can become a lawful resident of Antigua and Barbuda. On the other hand, if you've spent more than seven years, then you are on your way towards um, citizenship. And providing you have not committed any criminal acts in Antigua and Barbuda, uh, the amnesty will kick in. The cabinet also agreed to reduce many of the fees associated with regularizing one status. You will pay $200 to, um, to the, uh, towards the administrative costs uh, of the amnesty when you fill out uh, the form, and each of the forms will be numbered so that they cannot be just duplicated. Uh, so each form will be numbered. You'll fill out the form, you'll pay the $200. And then thereafter, depending upon your circumstances, it will be decided um, which of the amounts uh, you pay. The cabinet says the extension fee for CARICOM nationals will be 150 EC dollars under the amnesty, while non-CARICOM nationals will pay $300. CARICOM nationals seeking citizenship will pay an additional base fee of $2,000 
and a processing fee of $200, while non-CARICOM nationals will pay a base fee of $3,500 and a processing fee of $200. Thank you so much for staying with us right here on the ABS Evening News. Much more to come on this newscast, more of the national stories. We are still, uh, of course, we'll be making contact in a short while with Ambassador Ronald Sanders. So Ronald will share his views on what's taking place in Eastern Europe as bullets, blood and bodies have been on show around the world, including these are the other stories that we're also tracking at this hour as well. Cabinet agrees to providing further assistance to farmers regarding utilities. And later, update provided on consultations held regarding corporal punishment. We'll tell you about those stories upcoming on the ABS Evening News. Stay with us. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Antigua Barbuda Today, the best in news, views, and interviews, has another exciting show for you this Friday. First up, we'll hear about the installation of new computers in school. Also on the schedule, the Tourism Authority's newest romance campaign, the National Sailing Academy's Fun Regatta, and the return of horse racing, horse racing, horse racing to the track this weekend. Antigua Barbuda Today, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., it's all here. Get the kind of value you love that's unmatched at Courts Now. We're unmatched in quality and prices. Get appliances, electronics, furniture, and much more. You will love it. Get it now and pay nothing for 30 days with Ready Finance. Plus, shop now and get a chance to win a luxury staycation for two. Now that's unmatched value. Only at Courts. Bringing value home. Special conditions apply. Offer ends February 28, 2022. Welcome, a versatile and dynamic SUV, the Toyota Raze. Pick your engine, the fuel-efficient 1200cc or the vibrant 1000cc turbo. Accessorized with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Amazing luggage space and monthly payments as low as $716. Jump into a Toyota Raze today. Raise your style. Raise your confidence. Raise your vibe. Hardy Motors Limited on Factory and American Roads. Call 462-1062 or visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or HarneyMotorsLimited.com. Janserv is committed to keeping Antigua and Barbuda safe with our mass sanitization program. Our methods are safe, effective, and efficient and eliminate pathogens, mold, bacteria, and viruses, especially COVID-19. We are introducing the EPA-approved Victory Innovations Electrostatic Sprayer and Vital Oxide Disinfecting Sanitizer. Our solution is even safe to use around children. It's odorless, easy to use, and will disinfect areas and surfaces for up to five to seven days, depending on application. The electrostatic sprayer atomizes the molecules of the vital oxide to adhere itself to all surfaces. It's much more effective than wiping. We are committed to using the most advanced sanitization methods for the safety and health of everyone. For the cleanest clean, contact JanServe today. JanServe is a service mark of the Akima Group Incorporated. The first house calls in March will be epic. Tuesday, March 1 at 8 p.m., Dr. Chanel Joseph discusses anxiety disorders. House Goals delves into the area of mental health in another informative episode. Causes, detection, and treatment of anxiety disorders. Join the conversation on television, radio, and online, Tuesday, March 1 at 8 p.m. Don't miss it. Thank you so much for staying with us. As we told you earlier, uh, the might of Russia's military machine has been unleashed on Ukraine and the, the death toll has been continuing to rise. Oil prices have jumped and markets have fallen, meaning there could be ripple effects the world over for supply, prices and inflation. Joining us now with the very latest perspective on these issues, these geopolitical and real world issues, we have with us Antiguan Properties Ambassador to the Organization of American States and the United States, Sir Ronald Sanders, who joins us from Washington, D.C. Sir Ronald, thank you so much for joining us. Let's start off here in terms of the situation. What are the kind of impacts that you're looking at that 
this conflict could have on the Caribbean? First of all, let me apologize to you for the fact that I'm talking to you uh, from my car in a very wet and rainy night in Washington. So uh, the reception probably will not be very good. But uh, yes, what's happened in, in the Ukraine with this Russian invasion is a very serious matter for the entire world. In fact, as the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, told a special session of the United Nations uh, General Assembly yesterday, the world is now in peril. Uh, for the Caribbean, we are likely to face uh, serious disruption in gas and oil supplies, which will push up the cost of uh, oil and gas at everything, and, uh, for gasoline at the pumps, uh, for motor cars, for electricity for homes and hotels, for the supply of water, all of which has to be generated by uh, energy. And we will also see an increase in the cost of foodstuffs. And the reason for that is that Ukraine is the breadbasket of, 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 of Europe. When uh, Ukraine is not able to produce and supply food to the rest of Europe, Europe will have to start purchasing food from outside. When it does that, it will be competing with the rest of the world for food supplies, including us in the Caribbean. And we will see those prices go up as well. All of this because of this Russian aggression against Ukraine, which incidentally is a complete violation of international law and of the Charter of the United Nations by which all states are bound. Now, Ambassador Sanders, uh, what can the region do, if anything, uh, to limit some of this indirect impact? Well, uh, I mean, I, I think the region can start to think about how we can together start to bulk purchase uh, some uh, food supplies that we consider to be essential uh, so that we can reduce the unit cost for the prices we pay for them and for the way in which they are delivered. That's one thing that the region can do. The other thing that they can do is to start looking at supplies of oil uh, from the sources from which they buy it now and see if approaching that matter collectively, they could not, uh, they could not leverage better prices than they are getting at the moment when each of them tries to buy individually. Regionalism has always been the answer to the bargaining strength of the Caribbean if the Caribbean is willing to act collectively. Now, there is a heads of government meeting in Belize at the end of this month. I hope that these are matters which will occupy them when they meet. Uh, because uh, otherwise, we, I have to tell you that my own belief is that this uh, situation in Ukraine is going to be prolonged. And as long as it goes on, we are going to have the kind of disruptions about which I just spoke. Yes, Ambassador Sanders, thank you so much for, for, for staying with us and thank you so much for your forbearance. The last question, briefly, if you may. Uh, this has been certainly an epoch-making development. It has been indicated that uh, Vladimir Putin wants to recreate the Soviet Union. He essentially wants to uh, demilitarize Ukraine, according to him. Uh, what do you, in your own view, what about uh, the reasons for this attack? What really, in your view, is driving Vladimir Putin's decision to attack Ukraine? Again, and we, sh we should point out this is a second time because there was an incursion in 2014 in Crimea. Well, uh, the, the basic reason for it is Putin's belief that Ukraine traditionally belongs to, to Russia, even though the history of the area will show you that Ukraine was an independent country since 1015 until it was annexed by the Russian empire, that is the old Russian empire, uh, and then by the, maintained by the Soviet Union uh, before it declared its independence in 1991. Uh, it has settled boundaries uh, that were, that boundaries that were agreed internationally, including by, by Russia. But now uh, Putin has started this uh, argument that Ukraine belongs to Russia. Now, in part, the reason why he wants control of Russia is because he does not want any country friendly uh, to the West, and that is primarily to the North, Amer North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries, NATO. He does not want any country that's friendly to NATO on his border. And so Ukraine, which has applied for membership of the European Union, which is its sovereign right to do, the people of the Ukraine have a right to self-determination, and in their self-determination, they've decided they'd like to be part 
of Europe uh, because it would be to their economic benefit. Uh, now, they also decided that they would wish to be a part of NATO. That was a red flag uh, to, uh, to Putin. And instead of negotiating and discussing these things, he has acted in the way that he has, which is to send, uh, is to start a bombing the place. He sent troops into it. He annexed two areas that uh, he said were breakaway states. Uh, and uh, he's, he's recognized them as separate states. What he's in fact done is balkanized uh, the Ukraine. He's uh, divided it now into four separate areas, three of which is under his control. That is Crimea and the, and the two most recent areas uh, that he has recognized as, as separate states. So he's slowly dismembering Ukraine as well. And uh, all of this, of course, is, as I said earlier, a complete violation of the United Nations Charter and, uh, the, and uh, international law. And both the Organization of American States and the United Nations are likely to issue, not likely, are going to issue uh, statements tomorrow in cond condemnation of all of that. Yes. Thank you so much, Ambassador Sanders. Really appreciate your, as usual, a perspicacious analysis on these issues, for keeping us across them and for telling us about the impact that possibly we could all pay a price, possibly even at the pumps, for what's taking place in Eastern Europe. Thanks so much, Ambassador. Really appreciate it. Thank you. That's uh, Sir Ronald Sanders, who is Antiguan Barbados yeah. Ambassador to the United States and Organization of American States. We should indicate, as well as we told you earlier, that there's been a chilling warning from President Vladimir Putin of Russia saying that any nation who has been tempted to intervene on Ukraine's behalf, Russia will respond and it will be immediate and will lead you, quote, to such consequences as you have never experienced in your history. President Biden of the USA responding, indicating today in a televised address that the US will protect every inch of NATO member states with the might of American military power. We'll keep across those stories. Uh, let's tell you about this one finally, just before we wrap up our national developments. The government is providing further clarity on its latest move to increase support to farmers. Take a listen. Well, we suffer a significant drought and farmers must rely upon the water produced by the we suffer significant drought and farmers must rely upon the water produced by the Antigua Public Utilities Authority in order for the farmers to function uh, and to grow their crops. They, they now enjoy a 20% reduction in the cost of water. And we are going further. We are making an additional 15% uh, reduction in the cost of water to enable more farmers now, farmers with significant crop yields will also benefit from a 10% reduction on the cost of electricity. When we come back from this break, we'll turn our attention to news overseas. One of those stories that we're tracking closely for you is this one. We'll tell you about the plight of Jamaican students studying in Ukraine. They've been caught there. They can't leave because the uh, airspace was closed. We'll tell you about their experience. And later, of course, more on the attack on Ukraine and the response of the world. We'll tell you about these stories right here on the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back.